All right, stocks are at fresh record highs, still shrugging off turmoil in the White House. Here now is John Ede, president of Argus Research. And John, this latest bombshell from the White House is this Washington Post report saying that President Trump shared highly classified information with Russia's foreign minister, Russia's ambassador in a meeting last week. And we saw the dollar lose some steam off of this. But how should investors be processing this news? Wow, Scott. I mean, you can look at this from several different levels, right? I mean, it looks like the information probably has something to do with the, the, the Mideast terror threat. That's always a, a risk for the investors when something bubbles up. You know, two, you kind of get back to that whole Trump-Russia connection, which is, uh, you know, being investigated related to the elections last fall. And, of course, they, you know, just fired the head of the FBI um, who was involved in that investigation too. So this doesn't clear up that controversy. And then when you look at the fallout in Washington, I think we're seeing a lot of the Republicans just use this as a reason to further distance, them, distance themselves from the president. And that's going to make it harder for him to push through his health care and tax reforms and, and, and the rest of his agenda. So... Um, a little bit surprising this morning. Well, and that's what I wanted to ask you because the big question now is, does this crisis plus the firing of, of FBI Director James Comey, like you mentioned, do these distractions make it harder for Trump to push through his market-friendly agenda, aside from making his relationship with Republicans worse? Well, um, I mean, his polls seem to be at, at you know, record lows, all-time all lows, and um, uh, I think he's already started tweeting today, so he'll get his side of the, the story out. It, it certainly doesn't make it easier. All right, now the S&P 500 still, with all this, breached 2,400, which was a pretty incredible moment. Uh, we also got some better-than-expected earnings from Home Depot, better-than-expected earnings, revenue, comparable store sales. So should you focus on factors like this, earnings and Home Depot, the consumer versus the noise out of Washington? Well, you know, you, you talked about um, the dollar and the reaction of the dollar to the, the news. So um, if the dollar is going to fall because global investors are losing their confidence in you know, the United States, and I'm not saying that's happening yet, but that was the initial reaction, well then, chances are interest rates are going to be headed higher mm. because investors will pull their money out of U.S. bonds. And if interest rates are headed higher, that's going to depress S&P 500 earnings multiples. And, and, and rising multiples have been a real big driver to these record levels for the market. So it's, it's all it's interconnected. Awesome. But then, you know, to touch on your last point with Home Depot, ultimately earnings are going to drive the market. And companies like Home Depot and a lot of the tech companies are doing very well in earnings. And as long as earnings are going to grow at a double-digit pace, you know, I, th I think we're going to be okay in stocks for at least the rest of the year. All right, so 2400 when we see that, that doesn't worry you that maybe we're getting a little bit too ahead of ourselves? Well, you know, 2400 is is probably almost 300% growth from the bottom right. of the, the bear market in 2009. But again, earnings have, have more than doubled too. So as long as we have that earnings growth, um, we're, we're probably going to be okay. All right, we'll be watching it all, and we appreciate you coming by to share your thoughts. Thanks, Scott. All right, thanks, John. And I'm Scott Gam, and you're watching The Street.